everyone. Welcome back to the class. So, in the last class, we were discussing the first chapter. Almost it's completed. We had four concepts, mainly the two important, but the four concepts to discuss in the first chapter. The first one is about the size and the location. Then India and the neighbor. India and its relation with the world and neighboring countries. The four concepts we discussed. Then, what is the name of first chapter? Yes, it is India and location and size. Or size and location. That's about the first chapter India we discussed. And uh, we have some the concepts to discuss. And otherwise, we will recall all those things what we discussed. It's already completed. The chapter completed, first chapter. We will recall the things what we discussed. In the first chapter of Geography, like uh, we have two more points to discuss. One is about uh, uh, the points, like uh, the topmost point, otherwise the Indian landmass it starts from the top. The point where the Indian landmass, like I uh, suppose, here, suppose it's India. Suppose it's India, here the Indian landmass, the way the Indian landmass starts in this position, in this point, is called as Indira Kul. Indira Kul. Then southernmost is the Indian landmass which ends, it's in a Andaman Nicobar. It's Andaman Nicobar Island, it's called as Indira Point. Indira Point. So here the Indian landmass, it ends here in this point. This point is called as Indira Point. So the big other starting of a landmass is called as Indira Core, where the Siachen Glacier is there. Siachen Glacier. The glacier, you know, it's a water body, like a, a water body of a solid water, water body of a solid water glacier. You know. So here Indira Core and it's Indira Point. But now, we don't calculate this Indira point because in 2004 the Indira point has submerged under water. Due to the tsunami, the submerged. Now this is uh, calculated as the Indian the ending of Indian landmass, or the beginning of Indian landmass from the south to north. It's a Kanyakumari. Kanyakumari. So it's the end of Indian landmass. Indian landmass. So you should remember it's the end of Indian landmass. Landmass ends in Agmai. Then Indian frontier get ends in this Indira, Indira point. Indian frontier get ends in Indira point. But it's not there now. But it will be calculated. But in the end of Indian landmass, it's the Kanyakumai. Gulf of Manar, you know what? So then. The length of a uh, Indian landmass in kilometer is about 3214 kilometers. From north to south, we have a length. It's about 3214 kilometers. From west to east, 2933 uh, kilometers. From east to east. It's a location what we have a size. So we can add this point to the size. So what it is. These are the two points we are not going to discuss in this chapter. One is about the Indian landmass, the northern point. The northern point of Indian landmass is called Indira Kho. The northernmost point, the northernmost point of our Indian landmass, as we discussed, the peak of Indian landmass, we have a Siachen Glacier, so it's called as the Indira Kohl, with the name. And southernmost, southernmost point of India, 
is called Indira Point. But this Indira Point got submerged in the year of 2004. Now, the end of the southernmost point of Indian landmarks. is Kanyakumara. So India has a length of 3214 kilometers from north to south. The length of India from north to south is 3,214 kilometers and from west to east is about 2,933 kilometers. These are the two more points or three five more points. It's a lot. You can add up these points in the location of the size. Size. Yeah, the Indian land, the northern point. Let me take a look at the northern point of India. Northernmost point of India is about Indirakur, and southernmost point of India is Indira Point. The southernmost point of Indian landmass, landmass, is about Kanyakumari. Southernmost point of Indian landmass. Kanyakumari, so southernmost point of India, the frontier India is about the Indira point. Then we have the length of India from north to south is about 3240 kilometers. From west to east, 2933 kilometers. So this is about this first chapter. Right on this concept, we'll go for the next chapter. Right on these points. Right on these points. So we have four points. You can add these points in the size, otherwise you can write separately, don't worry, it's no problem. So, if you, uh, you have to add these points when you explain about Indian size. The size, we have a second point about the location and size we discussed. So when we explain about the uh, size of India, so there you need to add these four more points, four points. Size. And the location, you can add these two first two points in the one location also. You can add it in size. But you must add these two points, the kilometer distance in the size, the topic what we discuss in the size. So is that all? Is that clear? Write these points. Is it over? Yes, okay. Now, uh, today, we start to discuss about the second chapter. The name of the second chapter is Releases. So, First chapter is completed. Then whatever the questions are given at the end of your chapter in the exercise, end of every chapter, we have exercise. There you are given with the questions in the exercise. You need to give an answer for that exercise questions. And that all the work you have to write in or you have to record in a 100 page notebook as I told you to make a separate. Separate 100 notebook for the geography, history, economic countries. For that, there in that book you have to write an answer for the questions. Along with the question and answer in exercise, you have to write in that separate. Now, whatever you are writing is in the rough road book. So don't write exercise and the homework in the rough road book. What you made separate 100 page notebook, there you have to write your exercise questions and answers. Is that clear? Next, we go for the second. In second chapter in the geography, say we will complete the geography uh, book and we will go for the next one and we will complete book by book. 
So here the second chapter in the geography will continue. It's also very interesting. The first chapter, as I told, it explains. It's a basic information about the India. Now, second chapter, we are going or we are getting in somewhat deeper in the concepts, in the things, in the physiography. We here in the second chapter, we'll be discuss, discussing about physiography of India. Physiography. We'll be discussing physiography of India. Physiography. What do you mean by physiography? Physiology is physical. Geography. Physical geography. Physical geography is nothing but physiography. Study about physical geography. Physiography. So here, yeah, what is physical? You know about geography. Geography. You know the geography meaning of a geography is study about earth. So physiography. What is this physio physical? Physical is nothing but the thing which is present really and you can touch and experience that. It's a physical thing. It's not. It's man made but it's a physical thing. We can touch this and we can express. So it's a physical thing. It's a man made. So now here we are discussing on the physiography, physical things which is present in the surface of Alpha in the sorry in the India. That's what we'll be discussing. Physiography, what are those physiography we have in India? Different physiography. What is that physiography? Physical geography. Physical. What are the things physical you can see on the earth surface? Otherwise in India. On the earth surface. Physical things. What are those? Yes. Mountains. Yes. Desert, plain areas, plateaus, coastal areas, then the islands. These all the things called as physiography, like physical things, like physiography. This all the things has history. It all, it all the things has science. Means it has formed by some process, some systematically formed. It's all called physical geography. Physiography. So how these things all are formed? Mountain, it may, it may be mountains, plain areas. Plateaus, deserts, coastal areas, islands. How it all formed on the earth surface? How it has formed? Somebody has put in the, from a, a sky. The God, they made Tatas to and get this Himalayan mountain there in the India. Is it not? No, it's not. It has formed physically, it has formed, and this all the things has science behind of this. And this all the things formed because of process, systematic process. How it are formed? Before that, how our earth got formed? How it has formed? How it has got birth? Do you know about the history of this birth of earth? It's very interesting, you know. Uh, do you know how our solar system formed? Do you know how our galaxy formed? Do you know how our universe formed? Have you ever thought of these things? When you look at a sky during night, you'll be looking at a moon and the stars. Have you ever thought how these stars and the moon has formed? How this earth formed? Have you ever thought that? If you have thought it's good, when you really think about all those things, when you really get into this concept, how these all those things happen, so how this all those things formed and you will be in a, uh, what do you call a problem, you will be in a problem, what problem? You will be searching the information, how it all the things happen. When you get into the search to get information about all those things, then you are going in the right way. You should understand all those things, you know. So here, we will discuss now how our universe, galaxy and the solar system are got formed. It's not there in your textbook, but it's for the information. And if you know this information, you can get into this concept what you are discussing in the class now. Is it not so? One, suppose anything you are studying about in something or some concept, you should, you should know their uh, history. You should know that history and the basic things. Is not so. That's like that. We are going to discuss about the history, how the whole solar system and the earth and the universe got birth. So it's not there in textbook, it's for some extra information. Not extra information, information, it's a knowledge you must know. It will not be asked in your exam. 
in the ninth class, but it will be asked in the future. If you know about all those things, it will be good for understanding these concepts. So, like we will start from a formation of universe. The formation of universe, you might, you may ask, sir, you are saying a formation of universe. The universe has not formed 100 years back. It has formed 1300 crore years back. Is not. 1300 crore years back it has started, it is formed. 1300 crore years back. Nobody were alive on that time. Then how we know? So this all the things for our formation of universe, solar system, earth. We are getting that we got information from the proofs. Nobody were there on that time. Just is imagination. Imagination cannot become a theory without a proof. Now what we are discussing is about a theory, it has a proof, so it's called as a theory, otherwise it will become an imagination, it's called as a big bang theory, big bang theory, so big bang theory, it's not there, it is to just listen, imagine, imagine what I say, so big bang theory, it's a name of a theory, theory means an, it's a, uh, like a, it's on record, theory is about something really in fact about the things. So, Big Bang Theory, Big Bang, it's about how the thing has got formed. This Big Bang Theory was propounded by the George Limited. George Limited. So, it's a person, name of a person. He's a meteorologist. He's a meteorologist who studies about the soil, rock, all those things. Meteorologist. George Limitri is a meteorologist. He propounded the theory Big Bang. So, according to him, the universe got birth before 1300 or 1300 crores years ago. 13 billion years ago. 13 billion years ago, 13 billion, 1300 crore years ago, our solar, like our universe got birth. What happened? If I would like to say, if I would like to say, suppose it's a space, there is no end, there is no start for the space, you know, there is no end, any, any end or start, it's a very vast space. There, 1300 crore years back, the helium, lithium, it has got accumulated in one place. When the helium lithium got accumulated, it started to, it created a fire, it formed a fire. Same like gases, helium lithium got accumulated in one place. That fire, it has become very big and it has created more density. It led for the more pressure, more temperature. Because of more temperature and density, pressure increased inside. When the pressure increased, it has got blasted. Drastically, it made a change with the blasting. So, when the helium lithium gather together, it has formed a fireball, big fireball, it has blasted in the space, and every particles of the uh, the Big Bang, every particles what, what was there gathered in a, one place, it has spread across the uh, space. It has got spread. Every particles further it has divided. Suppose like. This is a big bang, like uh, this helium lithium, it has blasted and it has become a small pieces. From the small pieces, further the species has came out from uh, this uh, space. Further the segments, it has become some small segments from this, further. Then further there has it was a small segment from that to that many materials. So that's how it has got blasted, it has become a tiny species. So every piece of these things it has formed or it's called as a star. Star. It's called as a star. Every piece is from that, it's a star it's got spread. From there, you want that star also means from the star, another particles came out from the star and it has started to revolve around the sun. Sorry, stars. Example is sun. Our sun is a star, is not. What happened? It's a particle of that big bang. It has came out. And it was drilling, it was rotating. When it was rotating with a very fast high speed, the particles came out from this. It has came out. Then this particle started to revolve around this star. So these particles are called as 
planets. These all are planets, satellites, asteroids, meteoroids. Now also, even now also, these planets are revolving around this star called as the sun. That's how our solar system formed, and that's how how our Earth also got formed. When our Earth is a piece of sun, Earth is a piece of sun. Not only the Earth, and everything which is there in the solar system is a piece of sun. This piece of sun was fireball earlier, 4.6 billion years ago. 4.6 billion years ago. That means before 400 crore years ago, our Earth got birth. 400 years, 400 crore years ago. Sorry, 400 crore years ago, our Earth got birth. So at that time, our earth was a fireball, it was boiling like a sun, our earth was a fireball. Then, our earth got surrounded by the air. Our earth was a fireball, then it has got surrounded by air, in around it. Then, the surface is air. The two molecules, like two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen, it forms water, you know that, isn't it? So this water formed because of this air atmosphere. So this atmosphere, air and water, is contact with the surface of this earth. Our earth surface was fire at that time, it was a fireball, totally fireball, as like a sun. Our earth surface contact with this air and water. Then our earth surface started to become cool and solidification. After crores, after one crore, two crore years, after that, after one and two crore years, it has become very hard. Our earth surface it has become very hard, harder and harder. Now we call it a crust. Then it is getting inside harder and harder. Now inside till we have a fireball inside the earth. Inside the earth. We have a fireball. That's how our earth got formed. So now our earth surface is very hard, is not? Then after the two four years, our earth surface is very hard. Then how the how this mountains, plain, plains, plateaus, coastal areas, and the highlands got birth, this form, sorry, formed. How it has formed? Uh, according to what you understood, our earth surface was fireball, over totally was fireball. It is contact with the air and water, then it has become very hard, is it not? It has become very hard and it has become a rock. Then how these mountains, all those things form? So this all the things has formed because of movement of a plates. Movement of plates. Here, we know in the seventh class we discuss how inside the earth has a three layers. That means the three layers has formed our earth. Three layers. What are those? Crust, mantle, and core. Inside we have a core, it is a core. Mantle and also we have a crust, is not. These are the three layers inside the earth. We have inside the earth, we have three layers. Here we have fireball. Still the fireball is there inside the earth, it's called as magma. It's in the magma. The core, the name of that layer is called as core. The magma is filled in the core. It's like fire is uh, it's boiling, now as it's boiling inside. Then we have ma mantle, then crust here. Our crust is not continuously connected. Our crust is not continuously connected. It has broken in between. Our crust is broken in between. In between it has broken. So here, inside the earth we have a different layers as we discussed in the seventh class. It is a crust. It is a core. Mantle and crust is one. Further, the top layer of 
Dantel is what is top layer of the crust. Both the crust and top layer of mantle is called as lithosphere. And below the lithosphere, we have another one classification or layer is called as asterosphere. And then here we have upper mantle. Is it right? We have classification like this for the so this lithosphere, the crust and the upper portion of a mantle is what is a lithosphere. So this lithosphere is broken plate. It is a broken plate. That's what our this crust is not continuously connected. It's a broken plate. So because of this broken plate, the many landforms on our surface got formed because of this broken plate. We'll discuss how the broken plate it has made or created the landforms, different landforms of the earth surface. So this theory, like the formation of universe, solar system, galaxy, is explained by George Limited. George Limited in his theory called as Big Bang Theory. It has become a theory only after providing the proof. If it is not, if it is was not provided with the proof, it would be the imagination, only imagination. Actually, it is imagination, but he has provided with the proof. Then it is what is a theory, is not. If it is there a proof, it is real, is not. Real fact which has happened. So that's how our earth got birth. It's a history of a birth of earth, is not birth of earth. It's a basic what we discuss. Then now the formation of landforms. Earth, anyhow, earth got birth. Now we are discuss earth got birth till there. Then it has become three layers, very hard, and the layer also broken in between. You know that. Now we'll discuss further about how our Physical features form on the earth surface. How the physical features form? Physical features are there, you know, physical, the things which is physically present, which we can touch and experience. Otherwise, we can sense, you can have a sense of it. That's so physical features. You know. The physical features are, are formed due to the force. Everything. Suppose this pen is here. Yes, you know, you, you might you know about this. Uh, you are studying in a physics, you know. It is there the pen. And if I want to transfer this, or if I want to take out this pen, what is must needed? The force. Force it has transferred. Suppose here I have kept a pen over here, and I need to make make it to come over here, is not towards this side. So if I push this, it will come over here. So what? Played an important role here transferring this pen to this test here. It's a force, is not. So, because of force, everything on the earth's surface is formed and also it's been formed. Every any activity is going on the earth's surface, it's only because of force. So, same like that, the physical features on the earth is formed because of this force. There are two important forces in the earth which form the physical features on the earth. So you know, like on the physical features, on the surface what we have, we have mountains, hill areas, and we have plateaus, and we have uh, coastal areas, and we have islands, we have deserts. These all the things as formed in behind some reason, in behind some Forces. In behind of every this formation, there is a force, there is a process, there is a systematic process. So, what is that systematic process which has formed these physical features? What is that? So, now, what the concept we are discussing, it explains about how the physical features has formed the formation of physical features. So, now, what we are going to discuss in the second chapter, what is that? It's a physical features of India. Physical features of India. 
physical features of India. You know what the physical, which is physically or which is present, you can experience sense of it. Features, features, future is different and features is different. It's the features. And if it was a future, like a F U T U R, it's a future. But it's not a future, it's a features. Features like characters. Guna Lakshnagar. You know what the what are the features of mobiles? If you ask with the questions, it will go something like a RAM, ROM, this much, it's not. It's all the features. So here are the physical features of India. India is called as the mini world. India is a mini world because the important physical features what we can see at the earth surface are found in India. Every important physical features is found in India. Like mountains is there in India. Plain areas is there in India. Desert is there in India. Island. There are two islands throughout India. There are many group of islands in that two among, among the two. Is not. Plateaus. It's the oldest plateau in the world. We have. Is not. And uh, we have coastal plains. Longest coastal plains in the southern part of Asia. These all the important physical features we have in India. And ice covered in the northern part of Himalaya. Is not. In the Himalayas, how is ice covered? Is not. We can see that. So it's called as mini world. So now we'll discuss what is the reason, what is the factor which is caused for the formation of these physical futures or uh, the landforms. Physical futures like landforms, different landforms, relief futures. Instead of physical futures, you may say it's a relief futures. Relief, right? different landforms. Different landforms are called as relief futures. So, physical features and relief features. Relief features. Physical features are relief features. Anything you may say. So, that's what here. Yeah. As like a theory, the theory which explains about formation of whole universe, which is propounded by the George Limitre in his theory called as Big Bang Theory. Just like that, we have another one theory which explains about the formation of these physical features. Which explains about formation of physical features. It's called as continental drift theory. Continental drift theory. So in the continental drift theory, continental drift theory. So in under this continental drift theory. The Alfred Wegener he has explained about the plate tectonic. So who is Alfred Wegener? So Alfred Wegener is a geographer. Alfred Wegener is a person who propounded the theory called as continental drift theory. Continental drift theory. He has proposed or he has propounded the theory called as continental drift theory. He has explained about Continental drift. He explained in his theory about how the continents got birth. The causes for the formation of the continents. So he has explained it. And there, and he has many concepts which he has explained there. The plate tectonic. The plate tectonic. Theory. The plate tectonic theory it explains about the formation of physical features on the earth's surface. The plate tectonic theory. So this plate tectonic theory was proponent by same Alfred Wegener. It's the one topic in under this continental drift theory. So now we'll discuss about this plate tectonic theory. It is there in your textbook. So till now what we discuss? It's the information, it's the basic knowledge what we discuss. Till now. Now, what you will be discussing is there in your textbook and it is important. So, what is this tectonic? The first concept in this, the first concept in this is about tectonic plates. Tectonic plate. Tectonic plates. So this 
information about tectonic plates as given in the tectonic theory, plate tectonic theory, and who is proponent of like uh, what is his name who has proponent his tectonic plate? As Alfred Wegener. What is tectonic plate? Tectonic plate is nothing but the systematic movement of plates, technological movement. This word itself that gives information. The technological movement of plates is called as tectonic plate. Technological movement. It's a technique it moves, like systematically. The systematic movement of plates. The systematic movement of plates. So, what is the place? You get some doubt. Is what is the place? The systematic movement of lithosphere. Otherwise, the lithosphere. What is the lithosphere? We have crust and we have mantle. The upper part portion of mantle is called as lithosphere. So this is called as lithosphere. This lithosphere is not continuously connected. It has broken in between. So the reason it moves, it always moves. Even now also we are on the plate which is moving. We are on the plate which is, which is continuously moving. So we discuss about that. So here it is called as lithosphere. Lithosphere it is a top layer which is there, which is above the asthenosphere, is not, we know about that. So, the plate, the layer, the layer, like a lithosphere, which moves horizontally, Over asthenosphere. is called tectonic plate. Otherwise, the techno technological, otherwise systematic. Movement of a plate, movement of plates. Here, plates is nothing but lithosphere. Lithosphere is what is plate tectonic. It's an earth. It's an earth. The crust is not continuously connected. It is broken in between. Our continents, how many continents we have on our surface? Yes. We have seven major continents. Then how many oceans we have? Yes, five important oceans. Then there are many seas what we have on our surface. So before and uh, cross ears means two crore ear or uh, echo uh, two crore ears ago how was the condition means how it was looking like is it was same or at the surface what we have in particular position like uh, we have Asia here and we have North America, South America, Antarctica over in the south and uh, Australia here in the east it is all got spread it was in the same position earlier in the ancient period or in earlier two, uh, 200 crore years ago, it was in the same position? No. Our all continents and every countries, every uh, uh, islands were in a one group. It was gathered in one place. Everything. So how it was looking like? Our earth was looking like this. 
It's a landmass. Our earth, the landmass of the world, looking like this. Before 200 years ago, it was looking like this. Our earth surface was looking like this. It is a landmass, and it's a water body. This whole thing was water body, and it was a landmass. So this thing is explained by Alfred Wegener. Alfred Wegener has explained this theory, continental drift theory, about these two things, landmass. So he has given name for this landmass one as Pangaea. Pangaea. Or called as a great continent, otherwise Pangaea. So then this uh, surface was covered by the water body. It was called as Andalusia. So Alfred Wegener has given given the name for this. So our whole continent, countries, and islands were gathered in one place. It was gathered in one place. Then how it has become pieces into many like North America, South America, Asia, Antarctica, Australia. How it has become? And what is the reason behind of this? So the reason behind of having segment or fragmentation in all those things is the force. There are two important forces. One is endogenic force. Another one is exogenic force. So we have discussed about this endogenic force and exogenic force. Is it not? Endogenic force and exogenic force. Endogenic force that is the force which originates inside the earth is called as endogenic force. Endo means inside. So the force which generate generate the force which generate inside the earth is endogenic force. What are those force? Like which we get from inside the earth, like earth peak. It happens because of endogenic force. Volcano, it happens because of endogenic force. Landslides, it happens because of endogenic force. So then what is exogenic force? The force which occurs in outside the earth surface. Exo means ex outside. Outside the earth surface is called as exogenic force. So these physical features, what we have all the physical features as formed, these all the physical features as formed because of these two force. Because of these two force. So this Pangaea, what we call as the great continent, the Pangaea was together, all the continents was together. It has got divided because of this endogenic force. Even now, till now also, any scientists or geographers, they don't know the exact reason how it has become the fragmentation of division. According to them, and they say, this Pangaea has got divided because of this endogenic force and the revolution, the speed of revolution, rotation of Earth. Earth, it rotates itself. Is it not? It rotates itself. And the force which rotates is very fast. And it revolves, even the it revolves around the sun. So because of this, and also along with this endogenic force, the Pangaea has divided according to the scientists and the geographers. So the when land was all together, uh, gathered together, it was called as Pangaea. Because of this force, the Pangaea has divided into two divisions. Pangaea divided into two divisions. We will continue with the discussion about this tectonic plate. We will continue this in the next class. And I hope you understood about this. Write down these two points. And we will continue in the next class.